Australian things. Look, it's from my local bank. And it literally is as if Shrek and Sonic had a child. And I, I really mean that. It's Shronic. I love this. Someone's trying to get two bucks for this at some point, but I didn't pay two dollars for this. I literally found it laying in the streets. Can you believe no one wanted this? Completely off track already. Australian things, right? We used to make a lot of stuff. So your hero cars in the US are Mustangs, Corvettes and Mopars, and you guys in the UK, Rover 95s. Yo, mate, we had XB Coupes, Monaros, and Sandman panel vans. Yo, Aussies. That's all gone now. And it was really special because I forget how rare us Aussies are. Yet we had these things made just for us. So suffice to say, even in Australia, it can be hard to find Australian things sometimes. But today's guest on the green yelling rectangle are the Prisma Audio Azuls. I love the name. It's like the name of a villain who narrowly escapes at the end of a movie, guaranteeing a sequel. You know, I'd be at the cliff face yelling, Azul! So these are in-ear monitors or IEMs, and it's an insanely competitive market. I mean, 30 bucks gets you some KBE KS2s, like 30 bucks, and they sound great. It even has a microphone. So like this one time, I'm telling a fully sick story. It's got like everything you want in it. It's got like a romance thing in it. Like there's a car crash, like, like someone flips a wheelchair or something. It's fully sick, you'd love it. But like problem is I've just used up all the time talking about it instead of actually just talking about it. And so like, you know, we're all out of time. That mic is so good, 30 bucks. Whereas these guys are 300 US bucks, but hand built in old mate Melb's Aussie land. So Prisma Audio, like humongous company, right? And as you expect from a huge company, they nailed the packaging. Look how small it is. Look how perfectly fit everything is in here. <laughs> Amazing leatherette case, beautiful zip, there's little protectors here. And the boys, we'll get to the boys in a minute. Ooh, it comes with snacks. <laughs> Look, it's the Bud Bits box. Look, Bud Bits. But these are Sedna ear fits. Like, they're properly regarded earbud tips. Hey, eh? A collaboration I'd expect from two audio giants. All right, I can't bear the gills anymore. I've been lying to you guys. Not that these aren't hand-built in Australia or something. That is totally true. It's that Prismo Audio isn't a, a huge company. It's, it's a very new, small team. In fact, it's one guy. Josh. He's like a huge contributor on the audio discord and like communities and stuff. And this is his first product. I actually left out a very important detail from the unboxing. Let me put it back in. Let's, let's go again. Small production run is an understatement because usually under the lid, you will find this beautiful metal card. And looky here, unit number 10. These are the 10th pair to ever be made. In fact, if you go to the Prisma page, these are made to order. Mate, it's like spaghetti at a five-star restaurant. On, hey, this box layout is fantastic. Look how tidy that is. I, yeah, I know it's just a box, but man, do I hate it when products ship with like two tons of plastic waste. RCA, look at the size of this. What for that nugget? Oh, don't you want to squeeze this battery and hurt your thumb just to see a little line go only halfway up? Boys incoming. Milled aluminium or aluminum if you speak in feet. This cable is fantastic. Like it's almost soft feeling. Cause like, look at that wind on it. And they call it the behavior. I mean, check it out. Like you can just lay it down and it would just like coil up easily. Like the, the KBE is awesome, but hey, like for 30 bucks, you've got to cut costs somewhere. And, you know, and then you see this cable and it's kind of, you know, disobedient. <laughs> Still works good. That's like the difference between a cheap and like a really nice cable. That microphone though. So like everyone's super mad because like I won't give up the microphone and like I also won't tell the story. Like I just keep telling about how like cool it is. I mean like, you know, someone flips a wheelchair, man. It's nuts. All right, people are getting super mad. And I've, I've wasted all the time again. Not a crazy design, but definitely a bold color. I mean, dark metallic blue. And they fit my greasy head awesome. Like, any fitment is so personal. But it's time to talk sound. And, oh, wait a minute. Oh, what's that smell? Oh, oh no. It's the smell of boring time. Look, it's the frequency response graph to a set of DT770s. Like probably my favorite closed back headphones, like for the money you spend on for what you get. And it's a way to see the sound of headphones for the most part. So the higher the line, the louder that bit of the music. So down here is sub bass, then you've got regular bass, and then you've got the mids. And which is, where I'm being serious, most of the band live here, right? It's like pianos, guitars, trumpets, subway toasting machines. It's all up there. And just to 
show you how different it can look even with other fantastic sounding headphones, HD 600s. Like these are open back, so that bass roll off is quite a characteristic of that. But look at the bass on the DT770s all the way to the end, meaning if it's got crazy sub bass, you'll hear it as loud as it's meant to be, as the artist intended it. All right, let's talk sound of the Aussie boys crisp and clean. These are neutral sounding, but with a trend towards focusing on the top end. Not extra bass, but they are so airy. And in fact, they have an extended top end. And what I mean by extended top end is that not all headphones can play all the really crazy high pitch stuff. Oh wow, you've just cut into my studio room on the night that the video is due to be finished. I hated how I explained this bit, so I'm gonna do it again. Look at Shaw 425s, you know, well accredited, like, you know, dingus in his. Here's the graph for them. And yeah, all these graphs are artings, like great, great sight. But check this out. See, when it gets up to about 10, it goes, Ugh. now we get the Azul's up. Thanks, Critical, on, on your Critical. Look at this. Yes, there is a dip at 10, but all way up to 20, she's hanging out, mate, eh? So that is the extended top end. So yeah, this is a smooth that line, but it gives you an idea of what's going on. See so a little bit of extra treble, the extended frequencies, and it does go like right down to the bottom. But if you imagine as you're turning up headphones, this is a line that's coming up, you're gonna hear the top end stuff louder first. Oh, and uh, uh, by the way, the microphone you're listening to, yeah, mate, it's the KB's, this microphone, mate. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, use this mic, man. They remind me of Grado's. So like, if extra bass headphones are muddy if you hate them, or strong and heavy if you love them, headphones that accent the top end, basically the opposite, people call them fatiguing if you don't like that sound, or sparkly if you love it. These are sparkly. And folks wonder why I like Grado's so much, and honestly it's because before YouTube, I worked professionally as a drummer and percussionist. I'm jazz trained, I have two stinking jazz degrees. That's right, this bogan Aussie is cultured, oh, like off milk turn into cultured yogurt. In rock music, the kick and the snare drive the band. In jazz, it's the ride cymbal and hi-hats. So listening to 1960s Miles Davis albums with these, I can just hear Tony Williams' ride so clear, and it's heaven for me. So the Azuls, with their extended frequency, picking up all these overtones in my favorite drum hero cymbals, Yes, mate. But here's a twist to this similarity. Grados are open backs, meaning that all the outside noise goes straight in. They're not earmuffs. They're like colanders. Look, that's a grill. But what that also means is that everyone can hear your music. They bleed heaps. And then you got the Azul creating a, a similar sound, honestly, with more sub bass. It goes way to the end. But then working as full-blown earplugs. And in fact, since they're in-ear monitors, you can change these tips for actual earplug ones. And the mids are so nice with these, meaning that most of the music sounds nice. So these being tuned to be more neutral is actually something that makes them really unique, as not that many in-ear monitors are targeting this. A popular sound profile is the V sound. Look, let's make our own frequency response graph. Let's pretend that that is perfectly balanced. Now they're DT770s. Now imagine a set of headphones that have extra bass, come down for the mids, and then have extra top end. Huh? Huh? V. If extra bass and extra top end sounds fantastic, well, most headphones are the V sound. People just love it, and it's fun. It's a very fun sound. I've got V sounding headphones that I enjoy. I do have one little bit of criticism. The Pokey Boys on the cable are really, really long, and they don't actually go in very deep, meaning all it has to do is back out a little bit, and it could bend the wires. So if you can make it go in a little bit further, or maybe make the Pokey Boys a little less pokey, I think that'd be a really good peace of mind. I'd love to just bowl these up and chuck them into a pocket, but I'd hate to bend one of these cables. Small potatoes, mate, because hey, she still works. So folks think that I'm an audio expert. I mean, I'm not. I'm just a very passionate musician who loves listening to music. <laughs> I can't try every headphone out there. So I always suss out other reviews too. And folks are putting these up against like com proper competitors in the price range. ER3 SEs and the Moondrop B2s. And the consensus seems to be that no one thinks that the Azuls were better, but they all agreed that they were an excellent alternative option and just think about that. One guy is making these to order. Guys, I'm number 10. And yet, it's hanging out with big proper factories and even hangs out on price and boxed in features. The reviewer said that these are worth the money. 
It's not like these are heaps expensive with like the gimmick that they're handmade. So look, do you need $300 in-ear monitors? Well, no, of course not. <laughs> Anyone would grab the KB ears or KZs and be over the moon for like 30 bucks. I, you know, that mic. So like I'm, I'm hiding under a cupboard, mate, because like I, I stole the microphone and like and now I'm like hiding in a building because like, you know, I, 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 I promise I'm going to tell the story, hey, and like, I know, I like people are heaps mad, and I think they're going to punch me if I come out and go, oh no, jeez, oh no, mate, they found them. Oh, mate, oh, God, oh, God. But I love that these sound unique amongst my horde, and maybe there's just something really awesome about having a handmade set of headphones by an old mate in Australia. Like, we all love a good story, don't we? And hey, nice work, Josh. Man, if this is product number one, then you're already killing it. He did it the way that we all wish companies would do it. You know, don't skimp out on the bits that matter, like the cable and the good earbud bits. He also has balance cables for these things. Look, with the big massive dingus end on it. So yeah, Aussie, 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 oi, oi, oi. But that's it. Thanks so much for watching. Huge thanks to my patrons, especially these stinky names right here, because mate, $1 a month, I do extra videos. And since we're all about Aussie, pride, mate. Yeah, well, America has the Craig, yeah? It's why I, I just find it so funny, because we don't have Craig things in Australia. They're everywhere in the US, and they're still making things. But it's the name of an old mate. So it's an old mate you can bring with you. But the idea of a budget-conscious brand is certainly not a new idea, and here in Australia, mate, it was old mate Dick Smith. My first ever MP3 player was a Dick Smith like 128 megabyte nugget. And basically, I've been collecting a stash of Dick Smith things, and I've got a whole bunch here to show you. Like, they'll get a main video at some point, and there's things in this hoard that I don't think I'm ever gonna show again, and we're just gonna have a giggle at old mate Dick. And like, uh, I'll see you all next time. As we peer through the jungle canopy, we have to be wary of the Franklin, because if she finds us, oh my goodness, we're in trouble.